Hi, my name is Matt Ganger. I'm one of the pediatric ophthalmologists at the Flama Institute. Um, and we're going to talking about uh, children's eye diseases as well as our outreach with our mobilized vision van. Um, so vision problems and eye disease can affect school performance. Kids that don't see well might not be interested in uh, doing well at school. They might struggle to uh, learn the material that's presented. Sometimes this can be interpreted as behavioral problems in kids and lead to not doing uh, well academically. We have been doing uh, school screening with our mobilized vision van over the past few years since the pandemic ended. And uh, we want to let you know that this is an effective and accessible way to deliver eye care to children in our community. I'm going to go through a number of children's eye diseases here. Some are common, like refractive error, which is a need for glasses for blurred vision. There are a number of important ones, like amblyopia or lazy eye, strabismus, which is misaligned eyes. So I'm going to touch on language processing dyslexia, which is common in children, especially those with learning uh, problems. There are a number of rare diseases that we can pick up with school screens as well, including neurological diseases and tumors. So refractive error is just a term for any blurry vision where the eye is not focused. Um, this can cause kids to squint at school, have trouble seeing the board, and it's easily correctable with glasses. So a couple, a couple of the terms um, for focusing. Normal vision takes vision uh, from distance objects and puts in focus on the retina inside the eye. Nearsighted children, the focus uh, is best for up close things, but is difficult for things that are further away. So the board might be difficult for them to see at school. Uh, most kids are actually hyperopic or farsighted, and they can focus okay to see well during the day, but sometimes they can have visual fatigue with prolonged focus if they're very farsighted. And stimulus causes blur at all distances. So I usually describe it as kind of a warp to the focus uh, of the eyes. Uh, treatment refractive error is easy and cheap and common. Um, younger kids, they can have glasses to get things in focus for either near sinus or far sinus or astigmatism. And as kids get older, usually in junior high, we talk about doing contact lenses when they are ready and responsible. The next topic is amblyopia. This is generally termed lazy eye, and it's due to the poor development of the brain's visual centers at a young age. And it's typically decreased vision in one eye, either from unequal focus of two eyes an eye misalignment or an opacity uh, or cloudiness in the lens of the eye. So this uh, child has uh, a cataract in the eye in the pupil. That cloudiness is due to an injury. Treatment of amblyopia, uh, again, is effective and easy. Um, patching can be done for a few hours a day, patching the good eye to make the weaker eye work harder. Uh, there's a drop called atropine, which just goes in the eyes twice a week. That sometimes is easier for parents with very active kids who pull the patches off. And there are a number of new technologies, including uh, binocular uh, 3D video games uh, to help with lazy eye. The next topic is strabismus. This is just a general term for misaligned eyes, and the eyes can either turn in, like the photo above, or out, like the photo below. Um, this may lead to lazy eye or uh, amblyopia as well. Um, these children, if the eye turn is constant, can have trouble with depth perception, uh, which might make uh, coordination and sports difficult for them. Often they'll have social difficulties, especially as they get into older grades. Um, junior high kids with misaligned eyes often are bothered by that appearance. And some causes of strabismus and misaligned eyes can lead to reading difficulties. Treatment of strabismus can include glasses for kids who are very farsighted. It can relax the focus to get the eyes to be straighter like the picture on the right here. Uh, patching can be done in some types of students, especially those uh, associated with uh, poor vision or amblyopia. And then surgery can also be done. This is typically an outpatient surgery that might take 20 or 30 minutes with the child uh, asleep with anesthesia. Uh, it's outpatient, they go home the same day and are using drops for a few days afterwards. Most kids go back to school the following day or the day after that, after strabismus surgery. I want to touch on dyslexia. This is a very common problem and can lead to reading difficulties in children. Um, this is not an eye disease. It's more of a reading or language processing disorder. Um, and symptoms can include late talking, trying to learn new words and taking a while to do that, and a delay in learning to read. Uh, what's important to understand is that letter reversals and word reversals are common and actually pretty normal when children are learning to read and write. So kids that confuse their Bs and Ds, uh, that's uh, normal and not really a sign of any eye disease. The last thing we can pick up with children's eye uh, exams is neurological diseases. So we get referred a lot of patients for headaches to see if this is an eye problem. And most often it's not, but um, children can have headaches from squinting all day if they're not seeing well. 
Um, some forms of strabismus or misaligned eyes, the child needs to work hard to try to keep the eyes straight, and that can cause eye strain or uh, headache. The uh, last thing we look for, and probably the most serious one, is uh, diseases that cause high brain pressure can cause headaches. And we're important uh, as eye doctors to look at this because it can cause the optic nerves to swell, uh, like the bottom left picture. Um, and this can be a sign for our other doctors to know that the, the brain pressure is high. A rare uh, neurological disease in kids can be stroke, which can cause visual field or peripheral visual field uh, defects. They might not be able to see one side or the other side because they've had a stroke. The last important topic, uh, and luckily again, this is fairly rare, is tumors in kids' eyes. Um, the top left picture is a child with a, a vascular tumor called a hemangioma of the lid. Um, this can cause amblyopia because it's blocking light from getting into that left eye. They can be easily treated with a medicine called propanolol, which causes this to shrink up actually fairly rapidly. Um, you can have tumors of the optic nerve, like the top right picture. This is a child with neurofibromatosis. And one of the most serious ones that we see in children is retinoblastoma, which is a tumor inside the eye that can spread. So this needs to be recognized at a young age to be treated with either chemotherapy or by removing the eye and the tumor. Um, the last topic I want to talk about is our outreach efforts for the past few years. And our goal um, as we expand this program is to ensure that no child's potential is hindered by undetected vision issues. Um, and this involves four steps we do in the schools. One is screening. Uh, the second step is doing in-school exams. Uh, third step is glass. And the last step is follow-up. So I'll go through each of these quickly. Um, New York State mandates vision screening in grades K, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 11. And this requires uh, the school nurses to check distance, near, and color vision testing. And our efforts are to go out to schools to assist nurses uh, with our team of screeners. And these people include college and med students, uh, our residents and fellows, faculty members at the Institute, as well as community members. Um, and it's been a really fun way for me to spend days uh, going out to the schools to screen these kids. Uh, the kids that fail the vision screening are offered a chance to have in-school exams. We come out with our full exam uh, equipment uh, to do the exams in the school. This allows the child not to miss school, uh, can have the parent not have to take time off of work to do the exams right in the school. Um, and probably about 30% of kids will fail the vision screen that we do or the nurses do in the school so we can come back and do those exams in the school. Um, if the child after the exam requires glasses, our opticians can come out and show the kids glasses. We have a uh, donated fund uh, to provide uh, money to uh, give the glasses to these kids. Um, so our opticians will come out and let the kids select the glasses so they can have those right in school for them. Uh, the last step is having these kids follow up um, if they need to for more serious problems. And we have an office downtown at our South Clinton location, which is the uh, AB Vine Goodwill building uh, downtown, which is easier for these kids to get to than some of our uh, suburban satellites. So this whole process has led us to um, partner with 11 schools in Rochester, uh, both city schools, charter schools, and a number of elementary schools in Greece. We've been adding three to five schools per year. And over the past two years, we've done about 4,000 or more screenings uh, in these schools, which resulted us doing uh, probably by the end of this year, 300 or more in-school exams to help these kids see well. So just to wrap up, um, vision problems and eye disease can affect school performance, and we'd like to prevent kids from having a tough time with academics uh, if it's caused by eye problems. So our school screening with our uh, mobile eyes vision van is effective and accessible for these uh, families to provide air care, eye care they might not otherwise get. So thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.